In this session, we will review the steps for setting up the Manage Employee Information screen. Navigate to People, Employee, Basic Employee Information, and Manage Employee Information. The Manage Employee Information screen provides access to all necessary screens to create a new employee record. To create a record, first populate an employee ID. The employee ID is an alphanumeric user-defined field, which is required for each employee. The contractor checkbox identifies the record as a contractor. Please note that contractor records do not count towards the employee license count. Also, leave cannot be computed for them. Next, enter the basic employee information in the Employee Info tab. The tab key can be used to move from one field to the next. Enter the social security number of the employee you are entering. For status, you have four options, active, family medical leave, inactive, and inactive accruing leave. Family medical leave is for tracking purposes only, and inactive accruing leave allows for calculation of leave accruals while the employee is in an inactive status. Data entered in the last name, first name, middle name, and suffix fields will be automatically populated in the display name field. You may change the value in this field if needed. It is also reflected in the top name field, which is associated with the employee ID throughout CostPoint. In the current hire date field, enter the employee's most recent hire date. This date is also used for leave accrual calculations when a leave hire date is not provided in the Manage Employee Leave screen. The past hire date field is populated when an employee is rehired. Enter the employee's previous current hire date in this field. In the Taxable Entity field, enter the entity in which the employee belongs. The Timesheet Cycle and Leave Cycle fields determine the duration of the cycle. For example, a timesheet can be entered on a weekly, bi-weekly, semi-weekly, or monthly basis. The same applies for leave accruals. Enter the cycle that applies to the employee. The locator code is useful when printing checks and or leave statements. The code can be used to sort paychecks if the Print Checks by Locator Code checkbox is selected on the Configure Paychecks screen. The Supervisor Name and Preferred Name fields are for informational purposes only. The Prior Name field is used if an employee's name has changed. It normally is entered in the following order. Last name, space, suffix, comma, space, first name, space, middle initial. Selecting the Union Employee checkbox calculates the employee's labor cost based on a union profile rate. Union functionality has to be turned on in the Configure Labor Settings screen to make this checkbox available. The Eligible for Auto Pay checkbox allows for the auto creation of a timesheet if a timesheet does not already exist for the employee. Please note that the Create Auto Pay Timesheets utility needs to be run to create a timesheet. Next, we move on to the HR Data tab. Select the appropriate gender, marital status, and race. There are other fields that may be populated for information purposes such as visa information, review dates, and military status. Next we move on to the Address Contact tab. All fields in this tab are optional, however, if using CostPoint Payroll, the address information should be entered because the mailing address is printed from this tab. The work email address should also be populated if using Deltec Time and Expense, since this is the email that all notifications will be sent to. Also enter email addresses if you want to use the email address capability in CostPoint Human Resources to send forms electronically. In the Timesheet Defaults tab, we enter default information for the employee. The information provided here defaults on the Manage Timesheet screen when entering a timesheet for the employee. The GLC field is required. The Workers' Comp field is required if you selected the Require Default Workers' Compensation Code checkbox 
on the Configure Labor Settings screen. The Product Interface tab is populated if the employee uses Deltec shop floor time and or manufacturing execution. There is one exception, the Payroll Service ID field. This field is used when an outside payroll service is used and the employee ID is different from the one in Costpoint. Enter the employee ID assigned by the payroll service here. In the plant field, enter the plant where the employee will work. Select the shop floor time checkbox if the employee will be entering time using Deltec shop floor time. For entry type, select how shop floor time will be used. The options are punched, time is tracked by using timestamps to indicate when a job is started and stopped, exception, used only in special cases such as vacation and illness, elapsed, duration time is entered, and administrative, the employee does not enter time, but reviews timesheet data or performs system management functions. Populate the badge group and badge ID fields if the employee is accessing shop floor time using a badge. Select the Manufacturing Execution checkbox if the employee will be using Deltec Manufacturing Execution. The subsequent Manufacturing Order Clocking checkbox should be selected if the employee needs to clock in and out of Manufacturing Execution. In the Login ID field, Enter the login ID for shop floor time and or manufacturing execution. Lastly, in the notes tab, enter any additional information about the employee. This is an optional field that allows up to 254 numeric characters. Click on the save or save and continue icons to save the record. The salary record still needs to be entered before an employee setup is complete. This will be discussed in another session. This concludes the basic information setup of an employee.